Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Need a Lift podcast. That's right, this is the Need a Lift podcast with me, your happy host, Clyde Always. As always, joined today and every podcast here to for after by my lovely wife, my new wife as it were, which coincidentally is also my old wife, but we'll forget all about the wife I had in between. Her sister, Haley, may she rest in pieces, <laughs> as somebody uh, so cleverly pointed out earlier on my Facebook feed. Yeah, anyway, um, dear Kaylee the ukulele, my lovely wife is here. I got to get used to saying that. My lovely wife, Kaylee the ukulele, say hello, Kaylee. Oh, and me and Kaylee were just down by the old uh, liquor store. Not that we were drinking liquor or anything. No, I was having a rock star, a sugar-free rock star, to be precise. A sugar-free rock star, and I was jamming, doing my performance art, making the people in the cars smile and giggle and laugh and feel fun and funky and fresh and fancy-free. Because that's my M.O., man. I don't want... You know what? Anyway... Let's not get into it. Or maybe we should. What is my intention as an artist? Very good question. And it would make sense to me that if you were listening to me tonight, and I am recording at night, that's why tonight's tonight's podcast is an anomaly. Now, why am I recording so late? That's a good question. It's because I was consumed with watching the election results. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about it. But... <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a doozy. And I've seen a few. Anyway, um, yeah, so pardon me. I'm recording this later than I normally would, so I'm hoping that nobody is going to pitch a fit or have a stink about it, okay? That's all there is to it. She out of tune? Probably. Always. Anyway, hey, if you're listening to this, it's my hope. My sincerest hope that you are tuning in because you need a lift. So please, let me give you a lift. You artist, you creator, you, whatever it is that you do. I know it's worthy of being in the world. So, keep on plugging away. You know, never forget that any effort is better than no effort at all. All right? So many times we think, oh, well, if I'm not going to put in a whole eight-hour shift at it, I might as well not put in any. No, put in a, a, a second, even one second's thought. Turn off your phone. Blink. Turn it off. I know it sounds scary. Turn that fucking thing off. In fact, if you can swing it, put it on an anvil, and then swing a sledgehammer and smash that phone into smithereens. That would do you a lot better. But if you can just bear for just a a moment, all right, to turn your goddamn phone all the way off and go for a nice long walk with your thoughts. Maybe with the crashing waves of the ocean as some white noise behind your thoughts. Anyway, the point is be alone with your thoughts. You, yeah, you, you will thank yourself later. But since you're here listening to me, you might as well finish out the podcast. It's gonna be a doozy. It hasn't been recorded yet. I'm recording it right now, but I'm sure by the time it's over, you and I will be enriched by it. So, uh, with no more further ado, here we go. It's coming up. Your pep talk, or perhaps your pep talk has already begun. I don't know. I'm just Clyde always. I am only human. I don't have all the answers, but what I do have is a little bit of encouragement because I want you to feel encouraged. I would never want you to feel discouraged. So remember this too, okay? Okay. You can encourage yourself. Get on up there and do it, man. Now, I don't know what your thing is. Could be anything. Now, I'm always using the example of macaroni art, which is great if you're six. Or if you're not six, too. That's fine. I'm sure I'm sure plenty, actually, I'm sure, like, the Mona Lisa has been made out of macaroni by now. I'm sure lots of amazing things have been made out of macaroni. I'm sure somebody has made a two-scale replica of the Burj Khalifa out of macaroni. Which would be cool, I'm just saying. Whatever it is, your thing. Let's just take that as a generalization. Your macaroni art ain't gonna make itself, so get on up there and do it. And I know there's a whole lot of people out there making macaroni art for you to compete with, but it's a very subjective field, okay? 
So your macaroni art is the best that you can do. And it's not in a competition with the other macaroni arts. And that's all there is to it. Because you have been so inspired, you have been so motivated by that all-encompassing force. Now, I don't know, don't, don't say the, the G word. I don't know what you want to call it, but you have been so motivated by the macaroni art gods, all right, I said it, all right? To make macaroni art, or to crochet scarves, or to do whatever, I don't know. To write uh, feminist poetry all about how Clyde always needs to shut up and listen. All right, well, I, unfortunately for you, I won't be shutting up and listening anytime soon, but I do encourage you to continue to write your feminist verse and to get it published because there's a bazillion. There is a, I'm, I'm serious, this is a real figure, by the way, one bazillion poetry journals out there just aching to get your feminist poetry published in their on their pages so whatever you do don't stop don't get discouraged don't put down your poetry to pick up a video of a pastry chef making a gourmet oreo and nothing against because that's her art too that pastry chef making that gourmet oreo she has made an empire out of making gourmet um candies all right and good for her why shouldn't she make an empire out of making gourmet fucking candies i'm just saying Maybe that's not what you want to be doing. So you ought not be wasting your goddamn time watching mm, a pastry chef making gourmet Kit Kats out of sustainable, free-range ingredients. I don't know. Hey, everybody, I'm Clyde Always. I'm your happy host, joined as always, as ever, by my lovely wifey, Mrs. Kaylee the ukulele. Always say hello again, Kaylee. All right, and I want you to feel lifted, all right? I, this is the Need a Lift podcast, God damn it! All right, Haley's going to just sit right here because I got something to read to you fine folks, okay? Today's pep talk is about joy. Now, this is an excerpt from The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe all about a very wise man named Walter Russell, a da Vinci of our times, or I guess of our great-great-grandparents' times. But a a da Vinci nonetheless. All right. So these are words from the horse's mouth. The great composers, sculptors, painters, inventors, and planners of all time were in such an ecstatic condition during their intensive creating hours that the million petty trivialties Watson or Henry Ford express their creative thinking in our world-transforming industries. That is the kind of joy I mean. A joy which very few know and very few experience because that joy comes only to the great thinkers. To those who do find that inner joyousness, which comes from that miracle of discovery of the self, which is within every man, comes something also which is greater than success. To them comes, wait for it, the life triumphant. Let me define what I mean by that. The successful man is one who is considered to have made a success of his life according to modern standards, which include an accumulation of monies, properties, and an honorable place in the world of notable achievement and financial worth. Tick, 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 here it comes. In other words, The successful man is generally conceived as being one who accumulates values which can be rated by Brad Streets. But there is something still greater than all of that. There is the life triumphant which transcends all material success. The life triumphant is that which places what a man gives to the world in creative expression far ahead of that which he takes from it of the creations of others. And it should be every man's greatest ambition to be that kind of man. With that desire in the heart of every man, there could be no greed or selfish unbalance, nor could there be exploitation of other men or hatreds or wars or fears of wars. 
The impregnation of that desire into new age thinking will be the making of a new race of men which will mark the next stage of his journey from the jungle of his beginnings to a full awareness of the light of God which awaits all mankind on the mountaintop of its journey's end. End of quotation. All right. Now, whoa, hold on. Ding. Yeah, that was all totally planned. Anyway, let's just unpack that for one second. And don't worry about that light of God stuff, okay? We don't have to talk about that if you don't want to. All I want to say here is that that all comes down to your intention. If your intention truly is to give something great, something wonderful, something only you can give to the world, I mean, the creations, the creations of creative people is so subjective. It's so subjective that even have you been, have you been influenced by a hundred other artists who have come before you, the thing that you create is the one that you, is the one that only you could have created. Now, even if you sewed together a poodle skirt, even though a hundred thousand other chicks before you other hipster chicks have sewed together poodle skirts, have gone to the fucking fabric store and chosen the fabric and sewed it together on their sewing machines, all right? The one that you made, dear Lord, it is a work of beauty unto you. And it's a testament to the miracle that is your creative spirit, your creative mind. It is merely the effect that is the cause of, of your thought process. You brought that into the world by use of, your, of that tool of cognition, that lump in your skull, that thing that never stops pulsating, writhing, striving for greatness, man. That wrinkled old, ugly old gray piece of meat, as my dear friend, they call me Mitch, once pointed out your brain your thoughts your thoughts your thoughts are the seeds of creation never forget that be alone with your thoughts and creations will follow now here's the other thing too my man walter russell has made a very clever point all right What's going to happen if you sit around and play the same video game? If you sit around and watch the same TV shows? If you sit around and, and scroll through Insta feeds that you've seen a bazillion times already? You watch a million memes, you know, and you say, oh, that's a funny meme. I, what's going to happen? You're going to get bored. You're going to get numb. The whole world around you is going to begin to dull. And life isn't going to feel worth living. Because... You're not giving anything to the world. That's why. Because maybe that's fine for some people. Maybe they don't mind living a dull, boring, fruitless existence. But not you. Not you, you multi-talented, multi-faceted, creative spirit. You doer, you mover, you shaker, you. You're better than that. I know you are. We all knew you are. From the time you were a little person, just scribbling on a page with a crayon. From the time you were going blah, 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 smashing pots and pans together, making bop, 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 all right? We knew that you were destined for something big. So deliver on that. Don't become a piece of shit. Don't allow yourself to become a piece of shit. Don't sit idle. Don't watch your precious moments fly away. Give something to the world because I know you want to. That is the desire in your heart. Let it be the desire in your heart to give something to the world that only you can give. And dear Lord, won't it be a thing of fucking beauty? Dear Lord, won't it be a monument? It will stand taller than the... The monolith... It'll stand taller than that fucking statue of, uh, of Zeus. Or the lighthouse of Alexandria. My lord. 
you are worthy of bringing something gargantuan into the world. And it ain't going to be easy. So like I said in the beginning, just lay one motherfucking brick at a time, put one motherfucking foot in front of the other. Any effort is better than no effort. Get on it, you. I know you can. Okay. Hey, everybody, that concludes today's pep talk. I hope you found it all so inspiring, and I hope you're uh, enjoying yourself so far. Okay. Okay, now, as you may not have known, let me get a little segue here. As you may not have known, the Needlelift podcast is 100% unscripted. That's right. Now, I, who usually, you know... Yeah, memorize, script, and recite it for all of you fine folks, which, as you know, I will be uh, uh, performing something in just a moment. But, um, yeah, the, the main meat, the biggest chunks of this podcast are unscripted, unplanned, unplotted, unpremeditated, all right? It's just me riffing, okay? So it might be good, it might not be. There might be a few moments of silence, some dead air, as much as I hate it. Fill up that dead air. Somebody say something charming, for fuck's sake. Yeah, if you know me, you know I hate dead air. Anyway, don't worry, I won't let any dead air get out. I mean, but but there, there might be a little bit, all right? But I'm trying my goddamnedest. Anyway, hey, thanks for listening to my podcast. I hope you find it inspiring. I hope you find it entertaining. I hope you find it fun to listen to, and I hope you enjoy listening to them, because I'm going to keep on making them no matter what. And some days I'm going to roll over and I'm going to say, you know what, I don't really feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because that's my promise to you, and Clyde always keeps his promises. Because Clyde always is a man of integrity, and I know that you have integrity as well. So thank you for that. Okay, hey everybody, it's time, yeah, for a song. That's right. I'm not much of a singer, though I do dib and dab. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as a poet, what else is a poet but a lyricist? Or I should say, what else is a lyricist but a poet? So, with no more further ado, here it is, a little musical number I have entitled, Clyde Always Conducts the Symphony. <clears throat> oh, and if you've uh, never seen this live, be sure to look it up on my YouTube channel. It is hysterical. In fact, maybe I'll put a, uh... Bing! Uh, one of those little cards in the uh, goddamn Instagram video for this podcast. Anyway, not Instagram. Jesus tits. Ah, I'm all screwed up. Anyway, sorry, I promised you a song. Here it comes. A song. All my world for a song. Okay, with no more further ado, Clyde always conducts a symphony. This life on the planet, I wonder now, can it get any more noisy or loud? Now let's... Take us a listen to that and, and listen. Tune in to the sounds of the crowd. The shouts and the whispers, the mutterers, lispers, their jaws are all flapping away. Now everyone's talking no more like they're squawking. Guess no one's got nothing to say. Debaters debating, beraters berating, indignantly blathering on. When one of them stutters, the other one utters, you get the hell off of my lawn. There's gaggles of girlies like chitter and squirrelies, crescendos of giggles and squeaks. It's always a toss-up of rumors and gossip, most often resulting in shrieks. Chihuahuas are yapping, rottweilers snapping, retrievers and terriers bark. No human should meddle as loudly they settle. Just who is the king of the park? The Crickets are crickin', the ticks are all tickin', the chickadee's chirpin' a song When he's due for a pokin', the froggy starts croakin', it sounds like he's comin' on strong The donkeys all neighin', the birds are- oh, fucking me The donkeys all brayin', the horses all neighin', so we someone's callin' the sow You can hear the cut chewin', wait, what's all that mooin'? Shit, somebody's tippin' the cow Now, rightly we wonder, could that have been thunder along with the rustlin' breeze? Uh, no easy we cover, as soon we discover, with somebody cuttin' the cheese Violas and cellos, guitar totin' fellows, all strummin' at this string and that They're Sadly applauded with something gone rotted A gooey tomato we splat Pro secco is poppin' Stilettos clip cloppin' Ferraris are revved up and then They're having a rumble And now we all grumble There go the Italians again We're breakin' and rackin' The cue ball is crackin' We're playin' a song on the juke The barmaid's convection is loudly He's retchin' old rummy He's hackin' a puke The carpenter's nail And the backhoe is wailin' The jackhammer's poundin' the dirt While flexin' their gristle The workers all whistle At anything wearin' a skirt The geezers are snorin' The lions are roarin' 
the girders, they bend with the groan. The orcas are singing, now something is ringing, won't somebody answer that phone? Now sirens are blaring and dynamite's tearing, there's fighter jets rocketing past. A rock and roll show of the great Krakatoa, the boom of a nuclear blast from... Bangkok to Boise. This world, it's so noisy. With sounds overfloweth our cup. Doon, doon, shh, some real peace and quiet. It won't hurt to try it. So, everyone, shut the fuck up. Boom. Uh, thank you very much. And the crowd goes wild. Hey, everybody, I'm Clyde Always. That was Clyde Always conducts a symphony. I'm a little rusty on that one, in case you couldn't tell. Please pardon uh, the fuck-ups. Okay, hey, everybody, I'm Clyde Always. This is the Need a Lift podcast. This is my lovely wife, Kaylee the Ukulele. She's only slightly... You know what, man? She don't hold her tune in all that well, do she? That, that's all right, man. That's all right. We'll uh, we'll talk about this later, honey. But that's uh, maybe the last you've heard of her. She needs a nap. Just go. Just have a sleep, okay? You. We'll we'll bring you back next podcast. Don't worry about it. Anyway. Hey, everybody. We have reached that pinnacle point in the evening where we're about to go to this week's artist spotlight. That's right, every week right here at the Need a Lift podcast do I highlight a single, solitary, creative, an artist. Now I say artist too, and that doesn't mean necessarily, you know, a, a visual artist or a performance artist, all right? It could be anybody. Could be anybody, any creative spirit, all right? So if you've got a suggestion for who I should do next, by all means... Leave a comment. Tell me who you think I ought feature in the artist spotlight. The other thing, too, is I'm going, all right? I've only done, you know, famous dead artists so far, but I'm going to start branching out into the world of the living. I, well, no, I'm sorry. I guess I did Daniel Klaus. He's not dead. He's very much alive. I didn't mean that if Daniel Klaus is listening. I didn't mean that. No, I just meant, you know... Well-renowned artists. What I'm saying is, if you are an up-and-coming artist or a well-established artist in my midst, I would love to feature you. But you gotta send me, you gotta send me your email so I can send you the questionnaire to fill out, so I know all about you. All right. Not to say that I'm doing a whole biography or anything here. I'm merely highlighting somebody and commending them for their good works here on planet Earth, because I know that their intention was pure. How do I know this? I don't know. I just know. I go with my gut on this one. All right. So anyway, today's artist who I am featuring is the legendary comedian. I, you might even call him a poet, but he was certainly a monologist. Monologist. Monologist? How do you pronounce that word? I don't know. A reciter of monologues is a monologist? Monologist. You know what? I could have looked this up before I started this podcast, but I didn't, man. Because that's how I'm doing this shit, all right? You and me are learning together, and we're having a good time together. So thanks for being here with me, listener. I hope you're doing something productive. Like straightening up your room, for instance. Or running on the treadmill, or something like that. Or if you're just sitting around... Touching yourself, that would be fine by me too. No, no, that's fine. Anyway, today I know you're dying to know who I'm spotlighting today, and I'm 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 teasing you on purpose. I'm building the suspense because I'm trying to run up the clock here because I'm running out of material. No, I'm just kidding. I got all the material in the world. I got I got all the time in the world too, and I'm sure you do too. Anyway, today's artist is uh, yeah. Here it comes, George Carlin. Ah, oh, George Carlin. We love George Carlin. George Carlin. I can think of no 20th century comedian, no comedian of the late 20th century, who I revere more highly than George Carlin. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, what about Jerry Seinfeld? Isn't he better? Yeah, I mean, Jerry Seinfeld's great. He made a good TV show. Okay? But George Carlin was the fucking stand-up master. Oh, he was better than all the rest of them. He was a pioneer, too, if you ask me. 
Now, was he as good as Lenny Bruce? I know everybody say, well, what about Lenny Bruce? He was more of a pioneer. You're right, he probably was. All right? But the difference between Lenny Bruce and George Carlin is that I, in my formative years, by the way, was able to witness the master at work in real time. In real time. Somebody I looked up to because, you know why? Because George Carlin was the definition of a dissident. George Carlin was a contrarian, man. Everything. He scrutinized. Nothing was safe. Nothing was safe from him. He could make fun of anything. What's more, he got away. He, I mean, and granted, this he's well established. He's, maybe he's resting on his laurels at this point. But he started, like, uh, he, he would start whole HBO specials with a joke about <laughs> about vaginal flatulence. I'm not going to use the word that he used. But this, I mean, this is the kind of thing that he could get away with. He would make fun of the feminists. He would make fun of the advertising people. Mo I mean, that's, that was his, that was his gift, was he was good at snagging these words that we're bombarded with on a daily basis and arranging them in such a way, listing, that's, that, was his, that was his signature move, was his lists. Now, as a comedian, that's a smart way to go about it, to think about it, right? You're making a list. The heading of the list is a setup. The bullet points in the list are nothing more than a series of punchlines. Smart way to go about it. Think about that. One quick setup. Punch, 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 punch. All right. Now, George Carlin, too, he was a true, like, truly a lover of language. He was a poet. He was a vaudevillian performer. A lively performer, too. He could pantomime as, as he's performing these things. That's the other thing, too. He didn't have a goddamn... I keep saying that's the other thing, too. Anyway, pardon me. <laughs> Another interesting... Um, area to take note of in regards to jo oh fuck this the other thing too is george carlin he had he he never had a goddamn headset he was old school he always had that microphone and he could gesticulate keeping the microphone sometimes just between his two fingers it was amazing so if i mean i'm sure if you're listening to this you're probably in the same boat as me if you're a 30-something young man who has any interest in uh, humor at all, you will have known many, all of George Carlin's work, but in the off chance that somebody's listening to this, some young man, maybe some 18-year-old man or woman for that matter, pardon me, I don't mean to be so gendered in my life, I don't want to get into it. I'm just saying, if, if you're a young person and you have yet to experience the beauty and the grandeur that was a George Carlin monologue, then please... Do yourself a favor. And don't just watch like a clip either. Watch a whole HBO special. He will take you on a wild ride. Or just look up George Carlin's stuff. Especially if you're, you know, sitting on a mountain of shit you don't need. Watch George Carlin's stuff. Just look up George Carlin's stuff. And you'll be well on your way. So, George Carlin, I know you're dead. And I know you were an atheist, so it's not like I'm saluting you up in heaven. I'm just saluting that which you gave to the world. That's what George Carlin gave to the world. He gave to the world hours and hours and hours of monologues for us to go back and look at and laugh at. Okay, so a salute, a big salute to George Carlin, comedian extraordinaire, a dissident, an individualist, a wonderful, wonderful creative. Okay, hey everybody, it's time for my anecdote with which to sign off. And today's anecdote is, uh, yeah, coincidentally, also a plug. Because... Um, how do I begin? When I first started getting around on the open mic scene, on the poetry scene, on the performing scene, uh, there was one open mic that wasn't much of an open mic at all. And in fact, it sort of uh, inspired the structure with which I'm operating my post-apocalyptic open mic at the Scott Street Labyrinth every Friday now. You see, if you don't if you don't know this about me, I used to host an open mic at Cafe International on Hayden Fillmore every Friday without fail, rain or shine, hell or high water, but apparently 
If a pandemic goes and shuts down the cafe, what else is there to do? Ah, oh, well, we gotta do it, yeah, old school. So we're doing it outside. But where did I get the idea to do an outdoor open mic? I'll tell you where. From these kooky cats, these crazy boys and girls who do their thing every Thursday at 16th and Mission. All right. Now, if you don't know 16th Admission, if that doesn't, if you're not from San Francisco, that doesn't mean much to you. But if you know San Francisco, you know 16th Admission is kind of a scary spot to be standing around, especially after dark. Why is it scary? Because it's crawling with toothless ne'er do wells. And um, uh, I, 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 how how do I put this delicately? Um, you know, people who smoke crack and suck a dick to smoke crack, and things like this. It's a, <laughs> a gnarly little corner. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, uh, every Thursday night, I used to, back in t t back in my glory days, back in 2015, uh, back when I was first dating little Kaylee there, uh, her and I would go down to 16th and Mission, and it would be a whole bunch of young little grungy artists, young little grungy performers, right? And poets, poets of all white, you know, shapes and sizes and varieties. I mean, this was the nitty gritty, okay? And there was no sign up, no set list, no PA system, no microphone, no rules. It was a free for all, it was a circle. It was, you know what it was? It was Fight Club. It was Fight Club for Poetry. So there we would organize, there we would gather, and form a circle. Yeah, and there was one man, Chalk Visions. I wish I knew his name. I feel bad that I can't recall this man's name. The man who does the chalk designs. It was beautiful. Anyway, we would gather around his chalk designs, and when you felt so inspired to do a poem, you would jump in the circle and you'd just do it. Just do it. Can't be shy. Can't pussyfoot around. Gotta be big, gotta be bold, gotta be loud, gotta be boisterous. And if you're a little stage frighty, you ain't doing it. And if, um, oh, if for instance, like what I mentioned about all of the, ooh, the uh, riffraff crawling around that corner, you're gonna get heckled a lot. In fact, I would say it's damn near impossible to get through even a one-minute poem without some scuzzbag, some fucking bleh, oh, crack monster um, bothering you, heckling you in the middle of your set. And you're like, dude, could you fuck off? And I'm not, uh, okay, look, I know, I know. I have flown into a narcissistic rage there before when I was heckled by a particularly uh, irksome Man, I won't even say gentleman, because he wasn't a gentleman. He was a man, though, for for sure. A monster man. Anyway, yeah, he gave me a hard time, and I flew into a narcissistic fucking rage. But I learned something. I learned something. Don't let him get to you. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. This is where you come to earn your stripes. So, 16th Admission was shut down, as was everything when the uh, pandemic struck. But, but, beginning last week, and I was there to see it. I was there at the grand re-inauguration. Of this non, this open non-mic. It's an open, but there's no mic. Anyway, I was there. And it's back, baby. And it's better than ever. But uh, because the BART closes at 9, it's going instead. It used to go from, you know, 10 until 12.30. Now it goes from about 7 till 9. So show up at 16th and Mission around 7 o'clock. And you can do some poetry. And you can get that old funny feeling. That's the other thing, too. It is like a rush. Because it's scary. You don't have a Clyde always there saying, Come on, you, you can do it. Hey, everybody, clap your hands for so-and-so. Dear Lord, I really hope. No, it's not like I'm going to sit here and... I'm not, I'm not fishing for compliments or anything. I just, truly, I hope that if I've ever hosted you at the Cafe International Open Mic, I made you feel welcome. And I made you feel appreciated. That's what I want you to know, is I appreciate your art, okay? Now, that's the thing about 16th Admission. You want to come down there? You got to be ready for some unappreciative sons of bitches, all right? But you can do it. You can do it because you're stronger than that. You're bigger than that. You're better than that. You're ready to do it. So come on down and do it. If you got a poem in your head and you got a little fire burning in your soul, then come on down to 16th Admission and recite 
a little verse or two. And uh, that's, okay, now I, sh- I, I just, I gotta mention too, the kind of um, organizer. I'm not going to say MC, and he's not the leader either. I mean, uh, uh, you could say he is. One might say he is. I might say he is, but I'm sure he wouldn't say he is. But he is a founder. Let's say a founder, the founder of this here interesting anarchistic open mic, the 16th Admission Poetry Circle, Charlie Getter. So if you come down, you'll have the privilege and the pleasure of meeting a poet of astounding proportions, Mr. Charlie Getter. So my hat's off to you, Charlie Getter. Thank you for reinstating the 16th Admission Poetry Circle and getting everybody back together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was terrible. Anyway, I guess uh, we're going to play us out. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to today's podcast. Tune in next Wednesday. That's right, the Needle Lift podcast every Wednesday with me, your happy host, Clyde Always, and we're going to get Kaylee the ukulele tuned up before next week. I promise you that. Thanks, everybody. Nothing but love. Go create something.